This is Ken Morris, and I'd like to say a few words in honor of Ajaz's uh, many contributions, uh, not only to NIPTI, of course, which is why we're all here, but also to our community of pharmaceutical sciences uh, nationally uh, and internationally. Uh, I think he's widely regarded as one of the foremost thought leaders uh, in the world on the topic. He certainly is by by myself and all of us. I've known Ajaz for going on 25 years and I know him to be first and foremost now a philosopher, I would say. Uh, although clearly an accomplished scientist and a proven leader and a mentor and friend. Uh, a mentor to me, even though he's younger than I am, there's a, a saying we'll get to later that I think describes it. And I think his description of NIPTI as a community of knowledge really captures the concept not only of NIPTI but of Ajaz's approach to uh, our discipline. And you've often heard him refer to NIPTI as the third leg of the stool between uh, the government, that is FDA and, and industry, uh, and as such, has performed a function that that no other organization could have done. And uh, although Ajaz was at FDA when NIPTI was formed, when Steve Byrne first had the concept, uh, from the very start he was uh, clearly uh, on board with this. And I remember meetings with Fernando Muzio and Steve and uh, and Ajaz that uh, set the groundwork for NIPTI as well as the uh, Engineering Research Center. So if you had to describe his overall philosophy, I would say John Lewis did it best when he says, get in good trouble. So yeah, this is a sort of a, a, a laundry list, if you will, of some of the many, many things that Ajaz has worked on and accomplished over uh, the course of his career so far. Certainly under the category of thought, thought leader is well known as FDA, contributions to FDA after he left academia which was really focused on uh, the, on modernization of uh, Office of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the time, which is now OPQ in part, uh, but also was involved with the 21st Century Program, uh, instrumental in all of the major regulatory reform issues on the product side of uh, FDA and the, on the OPS side, uh, as well as internationally being uh, a key part of the ICHQs, uh, the, the important Qs, Q8 uh, for starters, uh, was really the author of PAT guidance, but also the brains behind PAT. That was some of the first work that we did with him from Purdue on, on with the camp organization. And the new prior knowledge uh, effort, which many of you may not uh, be as aware of, although we've spoken about it, uh, many times at the meetings, but may not be aware that it's uh, it's going a little further now, and we'll get to that in the later in the week. Uh, quality by design again was, if if not uh, born directly of Ajaz's uh, um, authorship, uh, was certainly his mentality going into uh, the, certainly the ICH process as well as his general approach to our our discipline. And as I said, NIPTI is the third leg. It was actually his and, and Janet Woodcock's uh, intention for our organization, which I think uh, makes it, uh, as I said, the most unique organization of its kind in the country. He also was the f first really huge proponent within uh, the government for pharmaceutical engineering uh, and advanced manufacturing. And as we know, the physical sciences uh, as especially as is, is connected to to the ideas of risk. In terms of his straight educational, I I, I defer I digress a little bit. Uh, not necessarily straight educational. His education is sort of com of combining uh, telling truth to truth to power and uh, and getting into good trouble, as we said. Uh, but so the philosophy of regulatory science has really blossomed under his leadership and the culture of quality that, of course, is the watchword of FDA was in no small measure due to his efforts. 
and f most of you know about his blog and this blog is just incredibly uh, detailed he's been very prolific and in keeping opinion and not just in our narrow area of pharmaceutics or dosage form development or <clears throat> manufacturing but but policy issues that affect healthcare in the country very broadly and has brought in a really uh, diverse set of concepts and uh, educational uh, opportunities from leaders throughout the world in all sorts of disciplines. We'll touch on that too. He's very big on cautionary tales and that includes some of the things that are listed here, the canary in the mine, parts of his blog and other lectures, the elephant in his room, elephant in the room, describing what we, that we don't know what we don't know. Uh, as well as the nocebo effects and their impact on clinical trials and the fallacies that uh, underlie some of our assumptions. Uh, and a uh, very important uh, issue or a uh, concept rather is the patient based failure mode concept, which is that to say that many times we lose track of the fact that at the end of everything we do, there's a human being usually. And uh, if you don't start with the patient-based failure modes, you can't really design uh, your dosage forms or your processes or, or even your compounds. And I'll talk more about the orders of consciousness, but that is an underlayment, if you will, uh, of uh, most of what, uh, what Ajaz has uh, worked on for his career. So we'll look at a couple of uh, photos uh, that sort of highlight some of those issues this in terms of of the sort of conscience of our discipline as the, as the title says uh, the idea that uh, you needed to actually design leadership for the 21st century pharmaceuticals and this of course was uh, in in 2019 but he'd actually started this as i said very early on when we were in purdue the lead for pharmaceutical engineering. This is back in 2005. Uh, and NIPTI as a rapid pharmaceutical development for emerging threat responses was another uh, initiative that born of his experience at FDA and, and his uh, ability to integrate across disciplines and organizations. And then uh, this is a new prior knowledge press briefing that we held on Capitol Hill. Uh, where the idea that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that there should be federal support for this concept and for this program in order to level the playing field for generics to improve quality, uh, lower price, uh, and increase competition. This is a very successful brief, and you can see, I think you, everybody knows everybody here. Some of you may not know John Clark, who is an old friend of ours and uh, worked in, uh, with AJAZ as the head of policy in OPS for quite a while. If you talk about the educational side of things, <clears throat> every time there was a, a NIPTI meeting and even in between, AJAZ and Vadim made numerous visits to all of the universities and a few, uh, a few are shown here. Uh, this is the meeting at Rutgers. This is during a lecture uh, series that uh, Ajaz uh, pr presented at uh, Long Island University uh, and uh, a defense of one of our students and St. John's University the Jaworski Symposium uh, with students uh, again and then finally uh, maybe culminating we had uh, the FDA courses as well as the public courses where we're looking at recalls failures uh, <coughs> modes and deficiencies uh, failure mode, sorry, uh, and deficiencies of drugs, uh, drug products, uh, where we all uh, pitched in to try to lay the groundwork for the FDA courses. This was the teaser course that was presented uh, free to industry. And it's still waiting to be fleshed out in the final form. And if you really think about the philosophical underpinnings of how Ajaz views uh, our disciplines in pharmaceutical science and, and, and I would say the, in the philosophical sense life in general. It's well captured 
uh, by this this slide, and he's presented this slide. I stole it directly from him, um, uh, where where we're looking at the orders of consciousness uh, that was that was uh, derivative of uh, Professor Keegan at Harvard University, where you have orders of consciousness that take you from essentially childhood. The first order of consciousness is an infant to a few years old. A second order of consciousness is a, is a little bit older, up to you know ten or so, and in the early stages, everything is either uh, built on impulse or is very concrete with no real gray areas. So the third order of consciousness is sort of the first order of consciousness that you think of when you uh, think of maybe adolescence would be the start of this, where it's it's starting to be aware, but you believe that that you can be made to feel in particular ways by others. You start to um, be more aware of your surroundings. And, and the fourth order of consciousness is really when you, you know your own mind is independent, as independent of culture uh, or expectations. Uh, and you can set limits and sort of maintain boundaries. But primarily, it's the capacity to explore thoughts and feelings. Uh, and create your own sense of authority or voice, which is, which is very, uh, very important. And, I, and very few people get beyond the fourth order, according to Kagan. And the fifth order, uh, which is uh, fairly rare, uh, but <clears throat> is really this self-authoring and willingness to work with the authority of others, but also to question yourself and to uh, become much less um, I would say venial or materialistic, and and that's really what you strive for. This is where uh, people uh, that uh, have made huge uh, advancements, Gandhi and, and others, as Ajaz has said, have uh, really lived. But the idea is is that uh, you have to remove yourself from the third order of consciousness pretty quickly. If you can't get to the fourth order of consciousness, you can't really contribute to to what we all believe is important. So uh, that's just my my take on Ajaz's uh, and paraphrasing of his philosophy. But uh, uh, I think it's something we could all learn to live by. And a culmination of that is really captured here uh, in his uh, phrase is care, is, care is research, knowledge is power, and wisdom is in practice. So if we combine all of those and then work backwards to what we do on a daily basis to design dosage forms, I think we can try to live by the standards uh, that Ajaz has set for us. And I'm going to end with just a, a couple of phrases here, quotes here. And this is and th th this quote. I, I don't remember if I've heard this first from Ajaz, but but the quote is uh, certainly representative of his attitude, which is behave behave as if you are the only student in the world, uh, and that way you can learn from anybody. Uh, and you should learn from everybody, and you don't have the shields up that prevents you from accepting knowledge uh, from people who you might not expect to uh, have those have that knowledge. And the second is is that those who fail to learn from history are condemned to repeat it. And I put a picture of the uh, Easter Island statues here. And so for those of you who aren't aware, Easter Island. Uh, statues are just phenomenally um, amazing structures that have been built uh, against all odds with no tools and with really just very rudimentary, uh, very very rudimentary uh, um, simple tools and just a massive amount of work. What you don't know is is that although we view this as a wonder of nature, in reality, the Easter Island natives destroyed their environment to build these these idols as well as other issues they deforested completely they died out essentially they uh, had wars and at the end uh, were behaving as people do when they're at their at the end and the question is is what did the last person who cut down the last tree on Easter Island think as they were laying them down to roll these statues up the hill uh, so um, I think 
this is a pretty uh, ab uh, sort of a pain painfully obvious example of this, but I would argue that that avoiding the Easter, the fate of the Eastern Islanders, is essentially the the battles that we all fight, and certainly Ajaz has fought uh, over the years uh, in each of the sectors uh, that he's been uh, that he's been in, in, involved with. And so finally, I'll end with with uh, just a picture that I from Ajaz's blog that I just particularly like, and uh, and also just to say that it's been. Uh, great honor to work with uh, with Ajaz, and uh, I think we all owe him a huge debt of gratitude. And with that, I'll I'll end. <laughs>